Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here in Brussels uh, in the company of the recipients of this year's ECF Princess Margaret Award. Hopefully we will learn from their example how to turn this crisis-ridden Europe that we are in right now and their culture is a remedy, I believe. So very short, uh, I will go to present myself. From 1980s, we were queuing for uh, basic needs. So it was communist time, um, and uh, yeah, we grew up in uh, these conditions. The art was official art, and a kind of alternative art, but I didn't like none of them. But also, I didn't know what to, to do in our very well-controlled society. I felt that I would die. I start to ask around people from different fields uh, how they do their profession. I was hoping, it was a kind of brainstorming, if you want. And uh, I was curious to see how they start to work. So, this will be almost the kind of first experiment I did during the communist time in which I tied people. I was curious to see what they feel and um, if they feel these tides. We were 29 years old when uh, the revolution started. 1990 were, uh, the, was the moment of uh, a lot of beginnings for us. So was a new life, the borders were open, we received a studio. Um, we couldn't continue creating objects, uh, paintings or whatever, because uh, we were on the street and the street was <laughs> coming in our studio. Uh, so we were more in debates, um, uh, meeting a lot of journalists from Romania, from abroad and so on. And since that moment, we start to collect uh, things. In 1990, I realized that 50 years were cut out from my information, uh, from my education. So I start to collect books, uh, catalogs, to recuperate all these 50 years in what we co I call now the archive of contemporary art. Uh, I'm a skeptic, so I, want, I need to check and I want to understand what was happening when. Uh, this is the uh, Europe map. So I try to make lines for each war. And this will be Balkan, also a lot of uh, wars. Having all this information, of course, we wanted to distribute in what I call the Knowledge Museum. I'm planning to build a museum, a knowledge museum, a basic starting point. Because from my point of view, we are living in great times. All what they discover now, all the possibilities we ima start to imagine and so on, give me, um, I don't know, a, a kind of hope. Um, so a lot of things to do. Back to us. So, our, you know, Lee and I, we both are academically trained. We, we studied like 12 years of still lives. But the life around us was not still. It changed dramatically. So, as an artist, I tried to cope with that change. How can I be part of the discussion, how Lea said. So, to make a, a long story short, so to make about 10, years in two slides. The translation was to, from like the classical drawing on paper to drawing on the wall directly. So this is about physics, hunger, and metaphysics, right? So, I am temporary. I draw on walls, ceilings, windows, above ground, on the ground, underground. And one of some of my projects have to deal with that, and they are based on that. So this is a project that I made in 1999 and the Venice Biennale in the Romanian pavilion. So this is drawings on the floor. The audience have to step on the artwork, 
and during six months of the exhibition contribute to some kind of a changing. So what was happening lately, and this is, the, this is how it's happening with what I do, just be aware how context change and how, what the new possibilities are coming. So I realized that the drawings I do have this kind of power. I do not define myself as an artist, political artist, or even an activist. But my drawings have this power. So I'm temporarily yours. If you organized in a group larger than five, you are welcome to our home and archive in Sibiu, Romania. Dan and Leah, thank you for a very insightful presentation that also already immediately made clear that you have a lot in common, but that you have a totally different tone of voice and style. Because you immediately undermine the cliché that people have of artist couples. If you Google artist couple, you come across Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera, Camille Claudel and Rodin. And somehow, even if you're not a feminist, it's always very clear that mostly, maybe Marina Abramovic and Olai is an exception, it's the male figure that dominates the scene. And you always feel this sort of tension or a symbiosis. With you, I don't see that at all, but it struck me that in you were nominated for this prize in a way as what you do together. And still for the presentation, you present your practice separately. The, the archive, it's, uh, I create it, I need it first, but without, without uh, Dan's help, being um, uh, successful, he made money, so uh, he doesn't like to <laughs> when talking. I'm saying this, but uh, without his help, really, I will not be able to do my research. And then when we talk, we talk together. <laughs> I think we try to keep our, our artistic practices separate. When we show together, it's like a parallel discourse uh, intertwining, but still keeping the differences. Mm -hmm. And the rest, the, the, we got prize, this prize because of uh, Leah's projects, which I kind of support. Mm -hmm. So you're really. subjugated here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Leah re read books and I read newspapers. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we combine these two sources. So we kind of talk and negotiate this. In a way that we're not doing a good job here. We're just talking amongst ourselves. But I think we would be delighted to know what you have to ask to Dan and Leah in this private date that has been very exclusive up till now. Are there any questions? When the chairman spoke and said that culture was the answer to the problems of the crisis, I was skeptical. But what I liked, I, I think you convinced me, uh, despite these words, that indeed your experience and I, I have made many quotes. One is negotiating different experiences. So I think, I, I think your, your wording of these things is close to what we have to do. I leave it there. Thanks. Thank you also. Thank, Thank you. you. So it seems that your dialogic marriage could be an example for how the European Union should be shaped. That's enough. <laughs>